All right, fifth graders, we are continuing along here in chapter nine. Uh, and this video is actually going to combine lessons 9.2 and 9.3. And really, quite honestly, there's nothing really new that we didn't really already talk about in 9.1 other than some problems that look different. So uh, in 9.2, you're going to get three types of problems, okay? And you're going to get some that look like this with some words that say find four-fifths of 15. Some just take out the word find, and it says like four-sevenths of nine. Some write it as a multiplication problem. And then in 9.3, they're all going to be written here like these multiplication problems. So we're going to go through these five problems, and I'm going to use this same video for lesson 9.3. So it'll be posted in both spots, but uh, it's the same video because it's covering the same thing. So if you're feeling the need to rewatch, you can just rewatch the same video. So this first one, four-fifths of 15. Well, all this is is the multiplication problem, four-fifths times 15. And we find the same thing where, once again, we have to make everything a fraction. Remember, step one is make everything a fraction. So my whole number 15 becomes 15 over 1, okay? Well, with a 5 and a 15, I can cross-check because they're both divisible by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 15 divided by 5 is 3. I can't cross-check a 4 and a 1. Nothing can go into both 4 and 1 except 1. So I go ahead. 4 times 3 is 12. 1 times 1 is 1. That leaves me with 12 over 1, or remember, a fraction is just a fancy way of writing a division problem. 12 divided by 1 is 12. All right, well, 4 sevenths of 9. 4 sevenths of 9 is just 4 over 7 times 9. And once again, making everything a fraction, 4 sevenths is already a fraction. 9 has to become 9 over 1. Well, so step two tells me to cross-check. Nothing besides one can go into both one and four, so I can't cross-check there. Nothing besides one can go into both nine and seven. And you'll see how quickly I'm able to figure that out. Fifth graders, that's once again putting a plug in for really knowing your multiplication and division facts. It just makes these steps much faster. So we're ready to multiply. Four times nine is 36. 7 times 1 is 7. Well, I know it's in simplest form because nothing can go into both 7 and 36 other than 1, but I can't leave my answer like that. I can't leave it as an improper fraction. I have to turn it into a mixed number. When I think about my 7 times tables, I realize, well, 7 can go into 36 5 times. And if I take 7 into 36 5 times, there will be 1 left over. My denominator here is 7. So my denominator there is going to be 7. I end up with 5 and 1 7. All right. 5 sixths times 10. Well, this one I'm just going to work from the one that's right here. Once again, whole number 10 becomes 10 over 1. I can't cross-check a 5 and a 1. Nothing can go into 5 and 1 except 1. But when I think about 6 and 10, and this is a good example... Because some of you will skip over 6 and 10 and say, well, that can't be cross-checked because 6 can't go into 10. Well, that's true. 6 cannot evenly go into 10. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. However, remember, that's not what cross-checking is. Cross-checking is about finding a number that can go into both. And both of these are even numbers, so they're both divisible by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Nothing besides 1 can go into both 3 and 5 evenly, so I'm all set there. 5 times 5 is 25. 3 times 1 is 3. I end up with 25 over 3. All right, well, 3 can go into 25 8 times. If I take 3 into 25 8 times, I'll have 1 left over. My denominator there is 3. My denominator there is 3. I end up with 8 and 1 third. 
The only number that can go into both one and three is one. So I know that's in simplest form because I knew also as well these numbers were as low as they could get. That was in simplest form. All right, so we're just going to look at a couple more for uh, just for good measure. And uh, 9.3 always will have problems like this. Sometimes the whole number comes first. Sometimes the whole number comes second. So when I look at 9 times 5 over 12, once again, the whole number has to become a fraction. It becomes 9 over 1. 9 and 12, well, they are both divisible by 3. 9 divided by 9, or sorry, 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Nothing besides 1 can go into both 1 and 5, so that's as low as it's going to be. Nothing besides 1 can go into both 3 and 4, so those can't go any lower. So I'm thinking, well, 3 times 5, 3 times 5 is 15. Then I'm going to do 1 times 4. Well, 1 times 4 is 4. Well, I know that 15 over 4 is in simplest form, but since the numerator 15 is smaller than the denominator, or since it's bigger than the denominator 4, I have to actually do 15 divided by 4. Well, 4 can go into 15 three times. If I take 4 into 15 three times, I will have 3 left over. My denominator here is 4, so my denominator there is 4. I end up with a final answer of 3 and 3 fourths. All right, last one for this video, 7 ninths times 5. Well, once again, make everything a fraction. 5 becomes 5 over 1. I cannot cross-check a 1 and a 7. Nothing can go into both 1 and 7 except 1. I cannot cross-check a 5 and a 9. Nothing can go into both 5 and 9 other than 1. So now it's time to multiply. 7 times 5 is 35. 9 times 1, I believe, is 9. All right. Uh, 35 over 9. There's nothing besides 1 that can go into both 35 and 9. So I know it's in simplest form, but I do need to turn it into a mixed number. 35 divided by 9. Well, I know that 9 times 4 is 36. This is only 35. So 9 can go into 35 three times. And if I actually did the division problem, 9 into 35, some of you may find that advantageous. 9 can go into 35 three times. 3 times 9 is 27. I can't do 5 minus 7. Borrow from the 3, make it a 2. Make the 5 a 15. 15 minus 7 is 8. 2 minus 2 is 0. I get 3, remainder 8. 9 can go into 35 three times. There are 8 left over. My denominator here is 9, so my denominator there is 9. I end up with 3 and 8 ninths. All right, we'll talk to you later, 5th grade. Bye.